So here is another example of how to complete the square. What's special about this example is that the question is trying to be really confusing. Like uh, normally uh, when you complete the square you do, for, do it for a quadratic which is in a standard format x squares then x is then a number so that's been rearranged and also missing out the plane number that's typically in a quadratic and this bit's been rearranged as well and it's got a minus in front so a couple of confusing things and um, I'm going to explain them and there's an important little thing I want to explain about finding out what P and Q are which is a typical thing you've got to do and there's a typical trick they like to put in the exam so we'll talk about that in a second let's start by making this question look a bit more normal so I'm going to put the x squared first then the x's and if I had a number I'd put it there but I don't have a plain number so I'm not going to put it there and uh, what you do when you've got a situation like this where you've got something in front of the x squared what you do in that situation is you factorize it so you don't have something in front of the x squared so that something is a minus in this case I'm going to put the minus there and then factorize it so we get x squared minus 6x basically so if that was if that something was a number like 2 then the 2 would go on the outside and then you'd factorize it whatever anyway so this factorize becomes that if it was this and a number that number would go on the outside and you would not factorize it you only factorize like the first two things where just to repeat myself when you have a quadratic you should have three things normally you got x squared you got x's and you got a number uh, you just ignore the number or you put the number on the outside but you don't factorize that number you just factorize the first two things anyway so this factorizes to this and then you complete the square for the stuff inside the bracket which is pretty easy you just simply halve the number in front of x so half uh, minus 6 is minus 3 and what do you do with the minus 3 you put that minus 3 in a bracket with an x and square it that's the first thing so you get x minus 3 all squared and then you take away the square of minus 3 so square of minus 3 is minus 3 times minus 3 is 9 so you take away 9 so yeah completing the square for this gives you that we've completed the square pretty easy now if there was a number over here like I was mentioning before then that number would go there and that number would go there now if that's very confusing to imagine do check out my previous example it'll make uh, a lot more sense this is like the most confusing of all the examples I've done for completing the square so anyway completing the square for this gives you this but there's a minus on the outside so there should be a minus on the outside here multiply it out and you get all of this minus times this gives you that minus times minus 9 is plus 9 so completing the square for this gives you all this stuff and we still need to work out P and Q and this looks a bit different to that so I'm going to rearrange it so it looks the same I'm just going to move this 9 to the other side because that Q is representing a number and this is clearly the number so this number jumps over and you get that and so you can now quite easily see this Q is 9 and also the P is 3 not minus 3 that's a common mistake that often comes up right so they purposely put the minus in front of the P to trick you that minus is that minus there so that P is that 3 there if it said plus P and then you got a minus 3 here then P is minus 3 because if you got plus a number and you got minus there but that basically means if you plus a negative number it's just you ignore the plus right so in short if it said plus p and you got minus 3 there then p would be minus 3 but since it already says minus p and it says minus 3 here that p is a 3 so q is 9 p is 3 that's it